Hello, this is John Miles, and I'm going to step through the process of organizing iris photos. I've done this many times, and I have worked out a method that I choose to use, and I will show you how that works. First in the screen on the left is uh, the folder of original pictures on the memory card. It's plugged into a card reader through USB, and over here is the pictures folder. I put the iris photos into uh, a separate folder and each person has a folder with a date and their name. Now in some cases such as today the person here has a folder already created. Other times I'll bring in a batch of several people and sort them into their folders. So here is the destination folder I'll take these and I right click and drag over here and I choose to move them uh, to clean, clear them off of the memory card. So then I am done with the memory card. I'm going to close that and then open this window up a little bit to take a bit closer view. I use extra large icons to get a first glance at the pictures. I sometimes make it full screen and um, for any of these pictures you can right click the image go to properties then details and you can get the aperture f22 here and that looks like a pretty good exposure overall so I'll probably go for something around f22 and I'll find the corresponding one uh, uh, for the left eye because uh, the way these are arranged, I will always go do the right eye first and then the left eye. And this is F25. Sometimes a matching one is could be off by uh, a stop. Let's take a look at this one. Or actually, I will show another way of doing it in addition to choosing the properties. That's F25. You can also put this into detail view and I can add in uh, the f-stop. F I just go down to the f section, choose f-stop, and then you can see all the f-stops. And that will show for uh, other pictures in this sequence, this window as well. So if I go to another one, it will show this as well. Now, the next step is, in the past, I have used various programs to inspect the pictures up close and now due to software considerations I generally will prefer to use the PaintShop Pro image management so to do that I'll flip over to image All right. uh, this is the name of this and then I go over here this is notice how manage is highlighted here so then I'm going to expand the folder tree go down to the folder I'm looking for and when there's a group of people at an event they're often grouped together as in this case and then I'll choose this starting picture 2107 is the number and now I can uh, compare that that starts out at a bright aperture uh, larger aperture and it goes down with this program you have to click the background to make this information active so here's F20 um, I'm going to click on this down arrow to go to the next. These are all a little bit light. And this one is uh, F25. So there's always trade-offs between sharpness, uh, glare, and brightness, which is exposure. And unfortunately, this program doesn't show the picture in their full detail. But any of these would be fine. This is a F25. And... This one here is F29, so could be 25, 29, and again this is refreshed and it shows F25 here. Probably F22 is a little bit bright, that's this one that I thought of first. Uh, here we have F25, although it has a little more glare, but if, let's say I choose this one then I click edit and it will open the frame 
and that can inspect the uh, focus and image quality by rolling the wheel forward here. Now up here I go back to manage and I need to pick out the best or matching left iris. This one here one is F25. So I'm going to step through. Now we're on the left iris. Yeah, but that has too much glare there. Um, they all have glare. Hmm. Sometimes it's unavoidable. This one is not bad. Let's see. That's a F25, so I'll probably choose that one. Let's see, this was F29. So if I choose this one, I highlight it by clicking here, and the background turns white, and it shows me the info. The number here is 2122. I click edit and it will open it up in the editor. So these are both F25 and now is a good time to uh, name, rename the file so I go save as and I'll uh, hit the home key, delete three times, last name, first name, which eye it is. This is the left eye 22, and then the date 201506. I know it's 0531 0531. And often I'll show what kind of camera was being used. This was a single central lighting, and the f stop, which in this case is f25. So, and it preserved the four digit uh, original file index number. That helps a lot to confirm track it later. So I've done this file naming and then I go to the other eye which is the right eye and I do file save as. Now this time uh, I see this image 2113 but I want to save a few keystrokes so I just hover, I click in this area and then I hover over that one and then I just need to double click here put in the RE and the number which I can see up here, 2113. I type in like that. So there's the right eye. All right, step two. The next step is I choose the cropping tool. And the cropping tool will remember the size and shape of the previous use, which is typical iris size, about 13 millimeters square. Bring it down maybe to 11 and a half by 12. Uh, now on uh, most image editing programs, when you see a check mark, that means you're ready for this program to apply that change. So we do that. And then I flip over to this one, and I use the same size of cropping because it's generally the irises don't differ that much in size. And you can get them both exactly the same size. Then you save it, save as add in a C here for crop. So here's the left eye cropped and here is the right eye cropped. So I save that as and I put in a C here. And the last step I do is I will make this a two up. So I change the canvas size. I take this number 3273 that's going to be 65 plus uh, 46, so 6550 is close enough, and then the 3168, yeah, and I anchor it here so it stretches it out wide enough to hold the other picture, then I click on the border to make that active, change the selection to get that out of the way, do a copy to clipboard, now it's ready. Go over here and I do a control E, which is a copy and position. And I bring this right up there. I know there's a few extra pixels here, but I usually put them together like that. So now this is, ends up being a selection, so it's on a different layer. So what I do is I uh, merge all, flatten 
and then I select none. All right, so that's my two up file, save as, and then I put a two to show it's two I. Then the next step is to uh, print this out. If the person wants a print, then I print it out. And if I do print it out, then I will go to this um, program. And I'll choose print. And I usually print out the two up on a nice large, uh, let's see the dimensions are 13 inch by 19 inch paper and uh, Canon Pro 100 is a recommended printer and uh, I also choose to include the image name uh, which shows up there um, is the printing options that helps identify the photo and it puts it right under the middle and then you can crop it down and they have a nice photo that is how I do my iris pictures then I will do this for all the folders one for each person and then I emailed the person the two up and the two cropped one ups. And that's it.